Um, so you have a new uh, podcast out. Yes. The busiest woman in the podcasting world. Tell us about this. I, I love podcasts. I've I, already, I I've already well. got his details, by the way, because I'm poaching your guests. Um, so my new podcast is called Never Live It Down. I love talking to people. Um, it's more so about people's most embarrassing moments in life. And I think that when people get interviewed, they get asked very similar questions. And I just wanted to get into the nitty gritty and find out things that people have been trying to hide away for quite some time and to own their embarrassing moments. And, and do you own yours? I mean, what's the most embarrassing thing looking back? I mean, where do I start, honestly? Um, well, I used, to, I used to be a model. Okay, I can believe that. Well, like an Irish model. So okay, I what, thought what when I started modeling, I was like, I'm going to be storming the catwalks of Milan. And right. um, I was on our local shopping street in Dublin in a bikini selling Magnum ice creams. Wow. <laughs> so that was... Okay. <laughs> I bet you sold a few, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Magnum were thrilled. There's some pictures of me with my head inside a giant burger, if you Google it, and that was an actual modeling job. And I'm like, but I sold those burgers well. Yes. Mm. Uh, Rick, I'm assuming that, that you don't embarrass easily? Uh, oh, I don't know about that. I think I, I, ugh, when I go back to looking at myself at 21, to be honest, it's a bit of a struggle, like we said. It's a long time ago now, obviously, yeah. and I'm kind of confronted with me being that age a lot. And so it does make me sweat, if I'm honest. It makes me kind of, you I know. just yes. don't find you embarrassing. I can't imagine you were embarrassing. Oh. Really? Yeah. Go on, tell us one really embarrassing thing. Well, I just told you one that I have to look at myself at being 21 all the time. It's like, you know, I'm a 58-year-old dude who has to look at myself in the bathroom mirror every morning. Do you know what I mean? I did try and be a pop star once. That was also really embarrassing. You did? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought I had nothing else to do with myself. I was living in Australia at the time, literally had so much time on my hands. And I decided that I was, I can't sing at all, by the way. Okay. And, uh, it's I never can't... stopped a lot of people, but yeah, go carry on. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. I was like, I'll do it anyway. I can't sing, can't dance. And there was like a songwriting course. And I was like, do you know what? Give it a go. Why not? I no literally nothing else on. So off I went and I wrote this pop song. And, um, and then we decided to release it as part of our podcast tour. And it is, when I say it's awful, it is shocking. And so the guy who actually wrote it, like the songwriter, I didn't actually write it. I, I had to go to him and I said, I've got great news. We're going to release the song. And he was like, oh. <laughs> uh, maybe not. He was like, I've actually gone in a different direction, but like, I don't, if you want to release it, that's totally fine. Just don't mention my name. So. <laughs> and what's Tim, his name? Tim Davies. All right. There you go. <laughs> so thank, you. thank you very much for that song. <laughs> uh, you've just finished doing up a house in Hoth. Are you, yes. are, you, are you coming back this way? Does Spencer know you're dragging him back yet? I am obsessed with Ireland. I think when you're Irish, you're so strangely patriotic. You, you are the same. Well, yes, but I mean, there's, there's levels of patriotism that you get. I mean, Vogue only uses Irish builders yeah. in London and then becomes friends with them. Oh, anywhere though, Any, yes. anything. So I had, when you're, when you're doing up a house, we were doing up a house in London and we had three builders coming in for a job. One came in and I was like, he's a really nice guy. Second guy comes in, Irish, I was like, will I bother with the third? And I was like, <laughs> he's coming now anyway. So the Irish guy comes in and I knew straight away I was gonna take him. And he came and did the job and now we're really good friends. I love his, his wife and I love him and we're all just this big Irish family. There you go. I mean, that is a very it, unusual yeah. story because normally when a builder comes and does your house up, you're never speaking to them ever again. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Yeah, you're like that. Even if they're terrible at the job, it's like, you're Irish, you've got it. Don't uh, worry. Uh, OK, now look, uh, we're almost out of time, but we were talking about Rick Rowland earlier on, uh, where people get an email, which they yes. think is one thing, but it's actually just a way of seeing this great man uh, sing. Uh, what we'd like to do tonight, we've got a few Rick Astley fans in our oh. audience this evening, uh, desperate to win tickets to see Rick tomorrow in Vicker Street. Where's Linda McLaughlin? Where's Le well, mm -hmm. Linda from Bolton Glass right. County Wicklow, how are you doing? Great, great, yeah. How excited are you to be seeing Rick tonight? Super excited. I've been a big fan since I was 13, which was um, 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing for? Sorry, I haven't got my glasses on, sorry. Which was actually 37 years ago. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah, big, big fan. Big fan. Mm. Look, what we're going to try to do, we're going to try to uh, win some tickets here. Okay. Um, all you guys got to do is mm -hmm. tell us if you think that these titles of uh, the emails we're going to put up are real or whether you've been Rick Rolls. Okay. So look, okay. here's okay. your first email for Vogue. Okay. Uh, have a look at this. Noel Gallagher bullies Rick Astley backstage at a gig. Do you think that that is real or are you being Rick Rolled? Well, I have to say, I, I, I like... Uh... I love Noel Gallagher, but he completely blanked me somewhere as oh, well. Really? Oh my God. Mm. I know, I don't blame him. Like, and I'm still going to their gig, obviously, because I'm obsessed. Um, 
I'm going to say he probably did do that to you. You think he did? I'd say he did. Okay, let's see if this is true or are you being rickrolled? Don't worry, you're going to win something. It's I've fine, Rick. Tell us what, what actually happened here. No, what it was, we, um, there was a huge big event when the <laughs> arena in Manchester reopened, and Noel Gallagher was headline, and he was great. He kind of had everyone in his, his room backstage afterwards. But in that afternoon, I have this habit of whenever I see my name in a gig on a wall pointing to my dressing room, and there's quite a few there because it's, it was the big arenas, so I kept finding them. I walk around with a felt pen and I write, instead of just saying, like, Rick Astley this way, I write, Rick Astley is a tit. <laughs> or, or Rick Astley thinks he's it, or Rick Astley's a knob, or what have you. And basically, Noel's security was trying to take them all down without me seeing it, and I went over to him, and he'd had Noel and the band, evidently, because Noel told me this, he'd had them all in the room, the band sort of, like, up against the wall, going, you bastards, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Bullying Rick Astley, he's a lovely bloke, leave him alone. So, um, yeah, so and I think. it was you all along. <laughs> no, there you go, there you go. So, Noel, Noel, Noel definitely didn't bully me, no. Okay, uh, let's see uh, if we can. Time for one more. Where is uh, Caroline Kennedy from Mayo? Where's Caroline? How are you getting on, Caroline? Hello. Hey, Caroline. <laughs> uh, let's see if we can win you some tickets for Rick tomorrow. Maybe, full faith maybe in Rick should have a go. What do we think, Vogue? <laughs> I think Rick will do okay. a better job. Okay, oh, yeah. so there we go. Oh, uh, is this down. true about <laughs> Vogue so. or are you being Rick Rolled? Oh, my God, uh, here we go. This email Vogue Williams forgives a taxi driver. Who took her on her wow. doorstep? Wow. Is that true? Well, or... there's no, there's no winner in any of this. No. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> um, you see, I, I've only known you for like two minutes, and I'm, I'm thinking you'd forgive people. You, you, you seem like a really nice person. You seem like if someone took a shit on your doorstep, you'd just go, <laughs> okay, that's fine. So uh, I'm going to say you did. This very is, this quickly, is... is this true or <laughs> is it a Rick roll? <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Um, that story will be the first one on Vogue's new podcast with Boom. Rick Ashley. Boom. Uh, shall we just give both of you the tickets? What do we think? Hey, let's do it. There we go. OK. Uh, Thanks for joining us. You were giving away your jewellery. What are you I, I doing? I'm giving it off. Uh, OK, uh, thanks for being such good sports tonight. Uh, Vogue, never live it down with Vogue. Williams is available to listen to on Global Player or wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, one more